Good morning and happy Sunday, happy Sunday, the start of a brand new week. And this is Dr. Yonette coming to you with another episode of a Baby Talk. Today I want to talk with you about epilepsy and seizures. You know, one in 26 people in the United States experience um, seizures. And so this topic has been a topic that I've dealt with repeatedly. Now, um, just recently, one of my friends um, or one of the parents of a child I was working with um, reported that her son was experiencing seizures and he had to be hospitalized repeatedly. Um, he would have these seizures at school. And then recently, one of my friends found out that her child, who was about four or five years old, was having seizures and she hadn't known until he had this grand seizure and ended up hospitalized as well. So today, let's dive into the, the topic of seizures and epilepsy. And we are going to use information from the CDC and from Children's Hospital in Philadelphia. Okay, so what's a seizure? What's epilepsy? What's epilepsy? Epilepsy is actually a disorder of the brain. You know, people who are diagnosed with epilepsy, um, they would normally have two or more seizures. And there are many different types of seizures, which we are going to get into in a minute. But let's see why or what are the causes of epilepsy. And there really are many, many, many different causes um, of epilepsy, which may include the brain structure. If there was injury or infection to the brain, there is also genetics, there, there are tumors. So let's look at where these instances um, will take place in terms of the development, the de development of the child. Now, in newborns and infants, Newborns and infants may experience one or many seizures while the, the exact cause of the seizure is often not known. The more common seizures are caused by these um, indicators. In infants and toddlers, you, they have seizures based on genetic factors, brain infection, brain uh, malformation or developmental differences, and if the child has had, an infant has had a stroke. In children and adolescents and young adults, they would also experience seizure caused by genetic factors and infection, brain malformation or developmental differences, but they can also have seizures if there's trauma to the head, and then there are some unknown causes of seizures. And then there are other possibilities in regards to why seizures may occur. If there's a brain tumor, if there is a brain uh, blood vessel abnormality, um, 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 seizures may result from uh, drug withdrawal. And then children may end up having seizures based on the medication that they're using. Now let's look at the many types of seizures. Seizures are classified into two groups. You have what we call a generalized seizure. And with a generalized seizure, it, um, it, the seizure affects both parts of the brain, the left and the right hemisphere. And under generalized seizure, the child may have what you call an absent seizure. And an absent seizure, which is sometimes called a petit mal seizure, can cause rapid blinking, where you see the rapid blinking in the child's eyes just for a few seconds, and then the child is, may also be staring into space. So that's why it's called an absent seizure. And then you have what we call a tonic-clonic seizure. And this is also called the grand mal seizure and can make a person cry out, lose consciousness, fall to the ground, and have muscle jerks or spasms. Now, the person after the grand mal seizure may feel tired, um, and so the, he or she would need a chance to, to regain the strength or energy. 
Now, the second type of seizure that I want you to consider today is what we call the focal seizure. And focal seizures are located just in one area of the brain. And these seizures are called partial seizures. So you may have simple complex or secondary. You may have simple focal seizure, complex focal seizure, or secondary generalized seizure. And with the simple se focal seizure, it affects only a small part of the brain. And then so that these seizures can cause, cause twitching or change in sensation, such as a strange taste or smell. And when you have a complex focal seizure, you will experience confused, confusion or you'll become dazed and you will be unable to respond to any questions that are directed to you for a few minutes. With the secondary generalized seizure, you begin, it will begin in one part of the brain, but then spread, as the word says, generalized, spread to both sides of the brain. And that person who is experiencing the secondary generalized seizure has a focal seizure first, then followed by the generalized seizure. Now, let's look a little more into these seizures and how they are first diagnosed and what we can do to help a child who has seizures. So testing and diagnosis happens within the hospital. Your child begins to have a comprehensive, personalized assessment, and we did your pediatrician will look at your child's medical history, the type of seizure that he or she is having, and then make a diagnosis. I'm not gonna get into detail about the diagnosis, but let's look at what the treatment that your child may end up having. When your child sees a neurologist, the goal of seizure management is to stop the seizures without interfering with a child's normal growth and development. And a few treatment related side effects may happen, but the major goal is to manage, manage the seizure. And so you wanna first make sure that the seizure is properly identified, what type of seizure it is. You wanna make sure that your child is given medication that is specific to the type of seizure he or she's experiencing. You want to make sure to use at least, the least amount of medication um, that is um, gonna make your, the, your child's seizure be under control and you want to manage the dosage, okay? So treatment, what are some of the treatments that we use for a child's seizure? They may include medication, they may include a ketogenic diet. They may include surgery, you know, surgery to remove if there's a brain tumor. Now, here are some specific treatment for seizures um, in terms of the following. You look at the child's age, the overall health, and the medical history. You wanna look at the extent of the seizure, the type of seizure, and the child's tolerance to specific medication and procedures. The expectations of the course of the condition and the patient um, parent's options or preferences. So if your child is experiencing seizures, how do you know what to do? Now, all, not all seizures require for you to call 911. You wanna keep track, we are going back again, we are going back to journaling. You wanna keep journaling about your, the seizures that you see in your child. And if the seizure lasts for five minutes or more, then you want to call 911. You wanna call 911 and get help. You also want to be aware of whether or not your child is experiencing seizures. And you, I mentioned the signs before, what are the signs to look for when your child is experiencing a seizure? I want you to be careful to look for the, those signs. And then while you wait 
for 911. What are some of the things while you wait for medical help, I should say, after you call 911? Um, what are some of the things that you can do to help your child? You want to want stay with a person until the seizure ends. Don't ever leave the person. Stay until the seizure ends. You want to comfort the person and speak calmly. You want to check to see if the person is wearing a medical bracelet or an emergency information. You keep others and yourself calm and you want to offer, um, you want to call the 911, like I said before, um, for the person to get medical help. Here are a few other things and then we're going to call this session a day. If the person, when the person is going into a generalized, tonic, clonic, or what we call a grand mal seizure, you want to ease the person to the floor. Turn the person general, gently onto one side so that the person is able to breathe. Clear the area around the person so that that person doesn't get hurt by sharp objects. And you put something soft and flat like a folded jacket under his or her head to pre prevent injury. Remove the child's eyeglasses if he or she wears one and loosen tight um, ties or anything around the neck that may cause um, the child, um, um, that may prevent breathing, the child from breathing. And time the seizure, time the seizure. Again, if the seizure lasts longer than five minutes, you definitely, definitely want to call 911. I know it's such a wonderful experience when you bring home your newborn, but sometimes we as parents have to deal with unwanted, unwelcomed experiences like seizures. And I want you to be knowledgeable about what to do, what to look for in the case, in case your child begins to have seizures. Remember, journaling is so, so, so important. Keep journaling so you have um, something to share with your pediatrician. Um, if you have to report a seizure uh, ha happening in your child, um, keep knowledgeable while you are taking care of you and getting the knowledge that you need to be able take care of your baby make sure you are taken care of first so that you can give your baby the best care he or she deserves this is dr yonet thanking you for joining me for another episode of baby talk have a wonderful sunday